you've written in the past that data turns the rhythms of everyday life um, into something static, categorical, and unchanging. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking about what you're saying now and what you've written about it. Um, I can't help but think of the history of writing because um, especially Plato's critiques of writing in which embodied face-to-face -face communication has been seen as primary mm -hmm. and um, immediate and authentic while writing has been seen as kind of secondary um, as a static representation. Oh, that's interesting. One yeah. defined by the absence of living and breathing bodies. Um, so thinking about that history of media from writing to photography to video to not to databases to location um, based data collection um, and to things like wearable technologies mm -hmm. which you've worked with um, how do you see these new media forms as similar or different from older media forms um, especially in terms of the way that lived embodied experience is inscribed um, what kinds of questions should we be asking about new forms of inscription yeah that's a great question, a pretty deep one. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, uh, Wendy Chun is always emphasizing that like in any new media, there's this old media. You know, there's always the return. There's always something that, you know, haunts the, the, the new form. The new form is always, you know, recapitulating, you know, what's been hinted at before in various ways. And, um, yeah, so certainly all these forms now, whether it's you know video cameras and wearables and surveillance and all this, you know, have these tendrils that go back into you know, all these historical ways of of writing for sure. I think, uh, yeah, inscription is interesting. You know, the, the idea of there's a couple different <laughs> things to talk about here, but. You know, when something is uh, written to a hard disk or an SD card or, you know, is that a form of writing? Is it, you know, the machine is actually like doing this inscription, you know, mm -hmm. is it a kind of, uh, yeah, machine transcription of what's going on or, uh, you know, is there interpretive license mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. there? Or is that the primary thing, like, yeah, the experience retains a primary form? I don't know. Um, the thing I was thinking about when you were talking is that uh, just to shift to kind of like a music sound perspective again mm -hmm. you know in the spoken word there's there's a auditory reality to it mm -hmm. you know so that, that idea of, of direct experience uh, and there's something there's something about sound and I'm compelled by sound in, in music you know in that immediacy hmm. right in the fact that sound as again as phenomena like only exists in time hmm. right you know you can you can sample it you can make it into you know a digital representation but uh as you know that that is a representation as as sound that like only exists you know as performed or you know whatever else like sight it can be misleading in that sense mm -hmm. You know, you look at a, uh, a photograph or a scene, like, you know, you, you, we have visual uh, experiences that are kind of suspended in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a resemblance between, like, a photograph and, a, uh, you know, like, what I see that, that, isn't, that doesn't exist with sound. You mm -hmm. know, like a, a digital file that can have no real indexical relationship to... Uh, what that is, it has to you know be pumped through speakers again, you know, reinterpreted by the apparatus, mm -hmm. you know, made like oral, and then it takes on the qualities of the room and the people that are there, or there's something more contingent about sound. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, which maybe goes to this difference between writing and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting thinking about inscription as a term because often in writing studies that word inscription isn't very common, but in media studies it is. And so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about, um, about inscription and how it relates to, um, to the ways that we, we think about re-experiencing things because of this way that you talk about um, the data exhaust that we all produce each mm -hmm. day, um, whether that's in our 
our our online experiences or whether that's even just in our everyday lives we produce this kind of data exhaust um, which is inscribed right totally and then um, yeah I was wondering if you could speak about that I think agency is an interesting thing to talk about there like I mean again we're talking about you know who's doing the transcribing because you start to have to think about algorithms right and like the mm-hmm. ethics of algorithms or you know do algorithms have this kind of mind of their own or are they you know parasitic in some way or uh, and we're talking about algorithms then we have to talk about code and, and code is an interesting form of inscription in that it's prescriptive you know like as a programmer if I write uh, I write an algorithm I write a program you know it can then be executed by the machine it then you know takes on this life and actually like kind of brings into being uh, materially, the materially produces what I've, uh, what I've written, mm-hmm. you know, as code. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which gives it a certain, you know, animus, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is something, you know, to position that, to figure out, like, how, how to think about that, uh, yeah, I think is yeah one one kind of major question. Um, okay, but in terms of inscription, yeah, let me think. <laughs> you know, it's another. We have this idea of inscription being permanent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether it's like writing on stone or clay tablets or, you know, whatever else, like, you know, like a permanent record. Um, in, a, in a media context, you know, you have like the hard disk or like the database or, you know, whatever else. And there's, uh, you know, so yeah, some sense of this being like a, a permanent record. Mm-hmm. What I'm interested in there is that, like data as inscribed as you know as it exists in storage media is is never inert right mm. like you know it's not a stone tablet it it essentially has to continually rewrite itself mm-hmm. right so uh you know a hard disk is spinning like you know electricity like goes through there a database is constantly you know replicating itself mm-hmm. constantly mi- you know migrated or uh you know, transitioning into new you know, schema or whatever else. Um, so there's a, there's a way in which it has to like self perpetuate mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that uh, that inscription or be like continually reinscribed, right, right. which I think is interesting. There's a earlier this year I was in uh, India and Tibet, traveling with uh, my friend who's a, a Tibetan Buddhist Lama, mm-hmm. and I found it really interesting how uh, prayer wheels are used and also uh, stupas they're filled with prayers you know written out mm-hmm. inscribed uh, writing of various mantras mm-hmm. you know that have a, a, a particular kind of magical effect in writing them mm-hmm. um, and then when you put them in a, in a prayer wheel and you spin the wheel uh, you know, what that does is essentially uh, enunciate that mantra, that mm-hmm. prayer, mm-hmm. you know, again and again and again. So you fill a prayer wheel with all of these, you know, written out mantras and you spin it. Huh. And then it, you know, is the equivalent of saying that mantra over and over and over again. Right, right. Um, which I found really fascinating, right? This, so it's this intersection between like writing something and saying something and then the action of spinning it and then just like the material presence of these. Uh, words and I like that it's something that attracts me to that you know as a uh, a parallel to some of these technological forms you know mm-hmm. of it continually reinscribing things on spinning discs and mm-hmm. um, you know over the internet and you know whatever else and and there's something in the materiality of that uh, you know the fact that it is you know, whether it's moving through air or whether it's electricity or, you know, whatever else that, you know, it, it, it goes against the idea of, of language being abstract or like the word itself, 
being entirely symbolic, mm -hmm. you know, and not uh, like the substrate being arbitrary, you know, mm -hmm. being like pure logos or something, you know, that doesn't have these embodied contingencies. Right. And, you know, we see these forms where they're like very, you know, rooted in, uh, uh, you know, the mechanical and material kind of, you know, forces that, that, that keep them alive and like sustain their kind of magical meaning.